Hi there, it's Wade McMaster here. Uh, in this video today, I'm going to be walking you through basically how you can create uh, Pinterest pins in Photoshop. Now you can use these Pinterest pins to promote your basically your blog posts, or it can even be things like videos. Could be anything you're looking to promote. Pinterest is a great place to promote it because it allows you to promote things visually. Uh, it links directly back to a website. And uh, on top of that, people who are on Pinterest are generally more likely to buy because they're generally people who spend money online uh, according to their demographics. So it's a great place if you're running a business or you're trying to earn money online, it's a great place to basically get images up there to promote what it is you do. Now I'm on Pinterest right now and you'll notice uh, a few things before we get into the video, just to give you an idea of what you want to be looking for or what you want to be trying to do. You'll notice in Pinterest we've got here, we've basically got six columns. And generally speaking, Pinterest runs in this fashion where we have columns of images. But uh, so that basically tells us that because we're using columns of images, all the images are going to be the exact same width, which means if we create an image that is very wide, uh, like something that's rectangular in the sense that it is not very tall, it's uh, basically, let's say, the size of your screen something that's going to be like about this this same width but maybe it's only this high then you only get a small image regardless of how large the image is so in pinterest what works best is taller images in sp specifically a ratio of two to three seems to work the best the most popular so that is saying that um if you had an image that was 200 pixels wide 300 pixels tall would be the optimum ratio for it that's not the size we're going to use but it gives you an idea now, as you scroll through here, you'll notice a few things. Now, not everything is the same. There are some things like infographics here with lots of, lots of information on them, and they tend to do very well. But if you're talking about uh, certain pins that are designed to drive traffic, the ones you see doing it are ones that have a visual, so some kind of photo, and then a bit of text. So the idea is the visual is something that just catches the eye because people aren't going through and reading all the images. You want the visual to grab the eye straight away so they go, oh, this could be related to what I'm interested in, and then the text describes what that pin is about. For example, here you can see a picture of someone here reading and freelance proofreader, and then everything else around it. So you want things to stand out. You want the image to tell a bit of a story, and then you want the text to complete the story to a degree. And uh, of course, the only next thing is usually a URL or some kind of logo also helps just to brand that pin and um, yeah, get it. Uh, so people know that it's actually your pin. So what we're going to do is we're going to head into Photoshop and we're going to get started. But before I do, I've got a few images here to show you. So I've got um, this photo of a computer here. Now, this looks like it's basically all ready to go, but uh, I'm going to sort of do a few variations on it just to show you what's possible. It's not necessarily going to be quite as cut and dry as just grabbing this photo and putting text on it, although that can work very well also. And that's how we'll start. But I'm going to go into Photoshop. I'm going to go to File and then to new to create a new image. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create, because we're working with a two to three ratio, I want an image that's going to have plenty of resolution. So it's going to be nice and big, but it's not going to be huge. So the image is going to be too big to download. Now the optimum size, I've, uh, I've basically, I've read this elsewhere. I can't tell you where I got it from, but a few web websites recommend it. 683 pixels wide by 1024 pixels tall. I'm going to click create. So that is basically our pin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start, I'm gonna add a visual, add some text, pop a logo on there, and we're gonna basically ship it off. So I've got my uh, image here in pixels. I'm gonna click on the preview, I'm just gonna click copy, copy image. Obviously uh, what you should be doing is actually going here to, to download. Now pixels does offer free images, royalty free images, so if you need images, it's worth checking out. And I'm just gonna paste that in place. I'm going to hit Control T, which is for free transform here under Edit, or Command T if you're on a Mac, I believe it is. And I'm going to just resize this image, shift it up. And if you want to maintain the proportions of the image you're resizing, if it's not doing it automatically, if it's doing this, you want to hold down Shift and it will click and maintain those proportions. So this is actually the perfect size for a pin, and that is completely unintentional, but that's all good. So what I'm going to do is we're going to say how to start a blog in four minutes. So I'm going to say uh, how to so how to start. So I'm just going to start. So I'm going to make this black. So 
before I get too ahead of myself, a bit of a bad habit, I tend to just go ahead and get started. I've just hit the letter T to bring up this text tool. I simply clicked and I can type in what I want. I hit Control Enter when I'm done. And you see over here on my layers palette, I've got blog and how to start. So these are my two text layers. I'm doing these in separate layers because I want to be able to resize these uh, using free transform to get them all the width that I want. So I'm going to go here, how to start. I'm going to actually click on the color. Since I have the text tool highlighted, I can click on the color and make that black. And when I click on blog, I can do that as well. Text tools highlighted, click the color, make it black. And I'm also going to make it bold. So I can click on this and make it bold. Now you can go through and choose, choose another font or you can head to somewhere like Google Fonts, download some fonts to install and try out. Um, that's entirely up to you, uh, but I'm using Oswald at the moment. It's not a bad font, um, just perfect for this video. I'm going to basically grab, I'm going to hold down control to select these two layers. So I've got blog selected. I'm going to hold down control to click how to start. I'm going to click control T for free transform or I can simply go to edit free transform. And I'm going to sort of just size this up until I got it about where I want. A lot of this, this isn't necessarily a step-by-step -step follow through tutorial, but just to give you a basic idea on how to operate. So I'm going to select blog here on my layers and I'm going to hold down control and just move it into position. Hit control with T again, or again, edit, free transform. How to start a blog. So you see we've got our text here. It's a little bit difficult to read with the background, but we're going to look at that soon and now I'm also going to add in under four minutes and for that I'm going to choose uh, one I used in a recent video permanent marker I'm going to make this red once again click on the text tool so I can change the color up here control T for free transform or edit free transform and I'm going to do this and if I hold my cursor outside of this box I can actually just rotate it a little bit and get a nice rotated effect. I feel like that text is a bit small, so I'm going to use my text tool to click in, hit enter. I'm also going to just select it all and center align it up here. Now I'm done, I hit control enter or command enter, I think it would probably be on Mac. I actually haven't used this, done that on Mac. I'm going to make this like that. Okay, so that text is probably a little bit hard to read, so it's. Um, might not be the best choice, but for the sake of this video, we'll just keep moving with that. So how to start a blog in under four minutes. Now the first issue we have is that it's actually a little bit difficult to read the text. If I had this as white text, I could actually put a black square behind it. So if I wanted to, I could actually grab my square marquee tool here, select the layer underneath the text, create a new layer, and I could just basically draw a box. And because the text is actually black, I'll actually Go to my paint bucket tool here, which if you can't find that, find a gradient or 3D material drop tool. One of these icons, hold down with your mouse and click paint bucket. I'm gonna actually use the white color here to create a white box. So if you had white text, you'd create a black box, that sort of thing. Now you can simply run with that. I personally don't like the white box. Uh, I think it just adds an element that uh, it's just when you have too many elements, things get a little bit too uh, busy, complicated. You want things to be simple. Uh, something I've learned for from you know, almost 20 years of graphic design is simpler is better. It just draws the eye more naturally. So I'm actually going to turn the box off, although that is an option to have the box there. And you see I've got the photo layer here. I'm going to click on that photo layer. And over here next to effects, there's a little square with a circle in it, which is a mask. I'm going to click on that. And you see we've got this second preview here with white and it is currently selected. If I move across, the white around here shows the image. It's, I've selected the image, but I'm gonna click over here to the mask. And where I have my paint bucket tool, I'm gonna to click and hold and choose the gradient tool because now I have my mask selected. Because I got black first here, white second, I'm gonna click and drag from black down to white, maybe into the computer a little bit. Now, one thing I just noticed then, if you go to your gradient tool here, at the top, I've got mostly transparent. I haven't actually checked that, so I've just made a mistake, but this is something that's good for you to learn. If I've got the gradient tool selected, at the top, I go here to this drop down. I've got a few options. I click on basics. I make sure I have the gradient, which has both colors in it. 
Now I go back, do what I did. I didn't actually select that. Okay, having a bit of an issue here. I'm not sure what's going on. Opacity is 10%. There you go. <laughs> so I've done a few different things here. Botch things up a little bit. But it's good to check these settings. If something doesn't quite work the way you want to, it's a lesson here just to check these settings. You can create a radial gradient if you want to. I want to make sure it's a, a linear gradient. So it goes from one point to another in a straight line, whereas this would be a circle. And you've got a few other options here. They're basically doing a gradient as shown in the in the little box there. And of course, you got other things like uh, how you want the gradient to blend. We want normal, 100% opacity. So there you go. There's a few things there I didn't actually realize I had set up from last time. So now I'm going to get my gradient tool and now I'm going to do this. And you'll see it's actually faded out some of the image. So I can keep on doing that with the gradient and adjust it. I can go back up to my text and click on the bottom text layer. Hold down shift, click on the top, and then I'm going to move it up a bit. And just to add a little bit of a visual element, I'm going to go back down here to the image, type in a new layer, and I'm going to basically get my text tool and just go uh, one click. So this is uh, that's in white, so you can't see it. So let's make it red. Hold down control T. This is just one nice visual element just to sort of demonstrate. To start a blog in another four minutes, one click, it sort of tells a story that, oh, it's only one click to this process. It's one of those visual things that just sort of works. This isn't the best looking pin I've ever made, but it sort of gets the point across. We've got an image, how to create a blog. You've got someone sitting at a computer. It's like, oh, cool, I'm going to sit at a computer. It's under four minutes. It's one click. It's pretty straightforward. I can now, if I'm ready, go to file. Actually, no. I've gotten a bit ahead of myself there again. I do want to add my logo to this as well. So I'm actually going to go to File and Place, either Place Embed or Place Place Linked. And I've got a few files here just with my logo on it. I'm going to go with the uh, Black Landscape logo. Now I can actually pop that logo at the bottom or the top, wherever it's going to fit. We're going to go with the top this time just because we've got a little bit more space to move at the top. And then go back up to my text, so holding down shift from the bottom layer to the top to select all three. Hitting control T, I'm going to actually make that a bit smaller. So you might also be wondering why would I not max this out and make it the full size of the pin? Because a little bit of space around things actually helps give it a little bit of impact. So something else to remember when designing. But we've basically got a pin here that's good to go. If I want to, I'd go to File, Export, Save for Web. I can choose JPEG from the drop down, adjust my quality till I've got an image the size I want to. And I can save that, pop it on my website, share it on Pinterest, and yeah, try and get it out there for people to grab. Now you don't actually have to follow this formula. Like I said, this is just a very quick and easy thing that I did um, without going into all of the steps. If I want to, I can actually move the image at the top if I want to, and then grab, say, the logo down the bottom the text it can be whatever layout you think is going to work best for the job i'm sort of just quickly rushing this one here so you know you've got a few options there it doesn't have to be any particular way um, and if you obviously if you've got a bit of the image missing and it's simple just go to highlight this area like with the square marquee tool here go to edit content aware fill and if it's simple enough it may just fill a nice color nice and easily. That's a little bit bodgy, but you sort of get the idea. We can now use our mask tool again to sort of cover that up a little bit. So maybe we just go up to the laptop. Has started a blog in under four minutes. Our one click is moved, that's okay. Let's move that up. So you can see it's quite easy to create a pin that stands out um, if you want to, you know, obviously bright colors work as well. So, you know, there's a few different ways you can get it to stand out because if you go back to that Pinterest feed very quickly, you're competing with a lot of images. So if I really wanted to, maybe I'd even make the whole thing red or make just like a lot, put a lot of red on there if I really wanted to. So, you know, maybe I'd just get my little paint bucket tool grab the color red, fill it, 
And um, without going into all the details, just sort of very roughly draw a little box here, hit delete. I've got a little red border there. Obviously, I've made a few adjustments there, but you're sort of getting the idea. Uh, trying to find ways for it to stand out. Now, red's a bit of an aggressive color. That might not work for this particular subject matter, but you do get my point. That is bright and it stands out. But that's basically how you create a pin. You create it at uh, those dimensions. So that's 683 pixels by 1024 pixels. Get some kind of visual on there. Add some text that's going to be short but very descriptive so people know exactly what they're getting on the other end. And of course, uh, that's the one thing. Like I said, infographics are good. They do reach people. But most of the information people want are on the infographic and it doesn't entice a click. Whereas having a title and something that uh, sort of is leading into the information you're trying to get them to see, then having something like that in a pin is another way to get people to basically drive traffic to your website or whatever it is you're trying to promote. So I hope you found that video useful. Now, um, one final tip, if you do want to actually save a template for future use, go to File, Save As. I'm not gonna save it here, this is where I save my logo, but as you can see, I'll give it a name such as template. I'll call it .psdt for template. And that will create a template file, which means next time I go in, I open that up, it opens like a PSD, but when I go to save, I don't, I never actually accidentally save over that template. It forces me to save another file. It's almost like saving a read-only file, except instead of getting an error, it just, says, it just comes up and gets you to save it somewhere else. So PSDT, very handy for creating templates you don't want to accidentally save over. Another little tip for that. And then of course, when you're ready, hit export, save for web, save your JPEG or whatever works best. Go from there. So. Uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a like. Uh, also, if you want more videos like this, please consider subscribing because I do have more Photoshop videos coming out. Um, if you want any other videos related to Photoshop, I guess even Pinterest, I've got a little bit of knowledge on Pinterest, uh, leave a comment below and uh, we can either start a discussion or see what other videos I can create. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching the video. Enjoy your day and I hope to see you again soon.